Hello and welcome. Today we are going to talk about how OSS and BSS are evolving with AI, generative AI and analytics. Um, and here with me is Jason Keane, who's head of portfolio for OSS and BSS at Ericsson to provide enlightenment. Welcome, Jason. Hello. So maybe we could talk about, to start us off, where and how you see AI and generative AI and analytics helping in OSS and BSS? Yeah, good question. Um, if I start, though, holistically, what's happening in the industry and, and what customers are asking us for and asking Ericsson for is there's a transformation underway. Now, there's always been a transformation underway in, in mm -hmm. the industry, but maybe more, more specifically, there is a level of automation that customers can now embrace to help lower their cost of operating or getting betting value for, for from their systems and also growing top line. Um, we see this with the advent of new kind of 5G technologies, cloud native principles, uh, public cloud providers, that there's a whole kind of technology revolution that could come in and bring up better customer experiences and new revenue streams to customers. It's kind of the background to where, where this all starts. As part of that, maybe the two functions you mentioned, AI, generative AI or gen AI, it's kind of locally known, um, allows customers to utilize these technologies to automate in a way that they weren't able to automate before. So when we look at a lot of customers that deployed analytics today, but they're quite static. In other words, uh, please report for me where something is happening or something else. But as we bring in the AI functions, including simple machine learning and, and then the generative functions, we can see it can actually help automate and it can help transform effectively. So if they're actually done well, it really allows you to kind of foster business growth, improve your customer satisfaction. But overall, it delivers a better experience and it delivers better optimization use of, of your uh, underlying technology. So what I see today is see today, it's actually quite exciting because it's been a challenging area to get through, to transform and embrace new technologies. What this unlocks is the, the possibility to do it faster and quicker. OK, so, Jason, I'm going to pick up on a phrase you just used there, which is if it is done well. And mm -hmm. I think that's really key. And we're nobody's suggesting that this uh, the implement, implementation of these technologies is as simple endeavor. How do you see the risks and challenges and and how might they be mitigated? So I think really the, the challenges are where should we focus? I mean, you can go big and broad on this and there's a lot of excitement in the industry about what it can do. But really, it's where can we focus to capture new opportunities? Like within OSS, within BSS, you know, we want to drive flexibility. We want to be, you know, agile. We want to be. This, but where can I make the difference today? The more successful kind of use cases we've seen so far, and everybody's experimenting, are where people yeah. have a particular, you know, business difficulty to have or operation difficulty have, and they say, we're going to operationalize that. We're going to do something to make it better, cheaper, faster, quicker than we have before. So, for example, one of the things we see is. Uh, on uh, operating differentiated connectivity. And we have open programmable networks. So we have something around what we call a, a more buzzer, it's intent-driven service lifecycle management. You know, what intent-driven means is you set the intention how you'd like the service to behave. And once the intention is set, the system constantly hunts to meet that intention. But it actually is a kind of a challenge that how do we, and where do we start this in the organization? Because Within organizations, data science is a model in itself, but really this is kind of a blend of the two, where we take information within my, my, my ecosystem and where we use it to enable either more efficient operations or top-line growth. Okay, and also I have found from long experience in telecommunications that often we tend to get overexcited about the technology and um, really the end we should start from is the business outcomes. And so thinking more specifically about business outcomes for a minute, how do you think AI, generative AI and analytics could help lower costs? And how will they, there's a lot of chat about these technologies increasing revenue, but how exactly is that going to happen? Yeah, good, good question. I think two things, right? I, I think if we go back to, well, if we go back to the first thing is every business wants to lower their cost of operations or have better operational efficiency and grow top line. That's that's a the magic formula for every business. But I, I think if we look for a moment, the actual value that our customers have in their data and in their 
their um, infrastructure, in what they know about customers, really what the, the insights, the analytics do, it allow you to collate it and bring it together such that you can do things, okay, I can deliver this service in a better manner. I can provide a better service experience. I can provide intelligent recommendations, for example, that I can see from how this customer operates, the current situation of my network, I can give them intelligent work so I can sell them the right product at the right time. I can sell not just the right product because I know that my operation efficiency is intact. I can sell you maybe a service level on that. I can say, actually, Mr. Customer, not only can I give you that connection, I can give you a, a service level around it, make sure that it actually behaves itself, and I can charge you a premium for it. With these kind of new insights and tools, we can actually get quite predictive. Right? We can actually predict what's going to happen and so say, this item over here isn't trending well. It's normally trending like this, and it's not trending well, not because there's a heavy traffic load, or not because the weather is deteriorated, or not because there's a, you know, a system overcapacity. It's because it's, it's simply not behaving itself. It's going on well. There's a component failure or something else. So what can actually happen is we can use this to actually troubleshoot and go, how do we prevent this failure of service happening? How do we shift the workload? How do we compensate? In a manual process today or within a manual kind of procedure, today, that's very difficult to do. So in Ericsson, we have something called external analytics that we can use to actually summarize and collect the data and then help identify where issues could be, help identify where troubleshooting, help prevent issues from going on. And it ultimately gives you operation efficiency, which means you can sell with confidence, sell more. So they're kind of both related for this. Another kind of aspect we see where this can help go top line is we see it, for example, in what we call, you know, talking with your data. So imagine for a moment, it's, you know, this, the data you have in your system, they're very complicated. And it's always been a bridge between the kind of commercial guys and the technical guys, how to translate between those two languages. You have the technical teams telling you that this is technically what's going on with systems. And the commercial teams telling you we would like to sell more and so on. So which is a normal process. However, if we merge that step and we allow you to have an English or a local language dialogue with your systems. You talk to them. You don't have to go with complex technical queries to say something. You simply say, system, I would like to configure a product that will sell an extra $20 of revenue this weekend. Please propose. And it will talk, check with it. I believe the following system or following commercial can help you do the following. It's a different way. We're now no longer stuck on the technical queries, but going up to level. Ultimately, what I'm saying is, if we have more faster, efficient processes, with a faster configuration, getting products out the door quicker, supporting the market needs with the flexibility, it can help both not just the, the top line, the cost, and ultimately the bottom line in real impactful ways. Okay, so I think at the in the first part of that, the biggest message I took away was that you're able to do granularity at scale to meet people's needs more exactly and in the service you provide. And I guess the real magic there is the granularity and scale because often you can do one or the other but mm. not both simultaneously so that seems to me to be a really big deal and in the second one being able to talk to data rather than need code or whatever seems to me to be an immense um step forward um operationally just yeah, a absolutely. huge amount of time yeah. saved and effort absolutely because then you could people can more focus on the business and the revenue than the technology, which is what you want. You, you want to be able to drive your business so you can compete faster and quicker. Yeah. Given what you've said, how far away are we from implementing this? Where are CSPs on their journey today? I appreciate most of them are at the experimental stage, but... Within a telco, we primarily see it in kind of the customer-facing aspects. However, when we go down into it, what we see with customers today is Everybody's going in a different, I won't say different direction, but exploring in different areas, depending on where their business pain point is. Like, for example, we had a customer meeting two or three weeks ago where they presented, our customers presented to us about what they were doing. And we saw use cases from customers where they were focusing very simply on they're rolling out a, a, a new network. So they're actually using the generative AI to predict where they should have stock or inventory to replace the RAM because they're saying, hmm, okay, if we ship, you know, equipment to the wrong locations, it's expensive. You have truck rolls, you have people, you have capacity. So they're using it to predict where they should build next. So it's a, a very specific use case, but they're saving cost from this and they're actually delivering much better experience for their internal stakeholders. What I ask for them or what 
they're saying to me is just, we want to really determine where we should put our focus and efforts and resources into this because it's so big and such a powerful tool. Where do we where do we focus? So while a lot of them are on the experimental stage, they're also moving from the experimental stage to actually, I think this can save cost. I actually think it can save cost. And what they're doing is saying they're applying it to places where they have a business problem already, determining if it can actually improve it and then addressing it um, directly. I suppose holistically, you know, it goes into in the perfect world, the system maintains itself automatically. You just set your intent. I would like you to do the following and it goes off and does it for you. I mean, there's a quite a journey to get there, but it's starting already. And I think this is good for our customers. In a kind of a wrap to, to your, your overall question is, I believe in what we see from our customers is it, it is the operation efficiency you can do. There is a business case for that. There's also a business case to grow your top line. But really, you have to look at where can I best deploy my capital to deliver this. Other specific things we're seeing with, with customers is we're seeing things like guided selling. In other words, and this may be funny, but they would look at can we sell? Should we sell this extra thing? If we sell this, can we make more money out of this? Can the network accommodate it? Product configuration, I've mentioned as well, how we can simplify it. Can we improve network experience? Like a very practical example we see as well is rather simple. It's, it's invoice anomaly detection. So when you do a bill run, maybe a normal bill run for an individual is $50, but for some reason this month it's $500. Is that actually an anomaly or has the customer genuinely spent $500 on their invoice? Are they a good customer? Do we present them with bill shock? Do we have some improving customer experience? So it's kind of used quite extensively all over the place. But the issue for me is that I suppose it's still the experimental stage. It's still a long way to go. It's a journey. Uh, it's an adventure and it's a journey. And this is an exciting evolution. And I think for us overall, it, it's about making better use of the data in our systems, about understanding a bit uh, better, getting better efficiencies, because ultimately we do that, we will naturally grow top line while improving operational efficiency. Okay. And if there's one thing that CSPs are not short of, it's data. But as you say, it's been making great use of that data that's been a real difficulty for a long time. We live in interesting times. Jason, thank you very much. Thank you, Annie.